In today's video, we are going to summarize the crime thriller The Stepfather. It is the remake of a 1987 film of the same title, where Michael Harding returns home from military school to find his mother living with her new boyfriend, David. As the two men get to know each other, he becomes more and more suspicious of his stepfather, who seems to have no flaw. Spoilers ahead, you have been warned. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment on what was your favorite part, subscribe to our channel, and let's get started. The movie starts as we see a middle-aged man in his bathroom, completely transforming himself. He dyes his hair, shaves his beard, and removes his brown contact lenses to reveal his blue eyes. He has several pictures of him and his family in the house. He goes to the kitchen and makes himself breakfast, but as he moves, we see the dead bodies of his family spread across the house. There are several bloody tools on the kitchen sink. The man goes outside and drives away with his luggage. At the Salt Lake City Police Department, detectives discuss the murder. The suspect is the stepfather, Grady Edwards, who has disappeared since the event. The police have identified a pattern in these kinds of cases and suspect that Grady is a serial killer who targets widowed or divorced single women with a family. He is very sly with his crimes and leaves no evidence of his identity behind, paying in cash for everything so they can't track his credit card info. There is zero information about his identity. Grady comes across a woman named Susan Kearns Harding in a grocery store. Susan is a recently divorced mother grocery shopping with her youngest two kids, Sean and Beth. Grady introduces himself as David Harris and charms her with his personality. He tells her that his wife and daughter died last year in a car accident. Susan invites him for a pizza party with her kids. It is six months later. David and Susan are engaged. Susan's eldest son, Michael, is coming home from military school. His girlfriend, Kelly, picks him up from the airport. Michael is not sure about Susan's new fiance. Kelly opens the door to their backyard to reveal a surprise party. All of his family are there. Susan hugs her son and everyone is happy to have him back. Michael finally meets David. Susan's sisters are at the party too. David proposes a toast. He thanks Susan, Sean, and Beth for welcoming him to the family and Michael for completing it. Susan's sister Jackie offers David a job at the real estate company she works at. Susan is pleased to get David off the roads. He accepts the offer. David then asks Michael to meet him in the basement. David has built several cabinets there. Most of them are locked. He opens one to reveal his collection of tequila. He wants to bond with Michael over alcohol. David knows Michael doesn't want to go back to the military school, so he suggests joining the high school swimming club. That way Michael could get a sports scholarship and get into a college. But Michael declines, saying that getting into the club is impossible. They take a shot together. After the party, Michael sees Kelly off. Later, Susan comes to Michael's room. She tells him to try to get along with David. Michael, however, tells her to hold on to the lectures. The next day, David goes to Michael's old high school, talks to the sports teacher, and gets him into the swimming club. Michael is very thankful. Kelly comes over later. She and Michael are swimming in their backyard pool. Sean, on the other hand, is playing a video game at full volume. Susan tells him to turn it down repeatedly. Finally, David goes to his room and grabs him by the back of his neck to stop him. Sean is too scared to say anything. Sean looks visibly sad at the dinner table. Susan asks him if something is wrong, but he dismisses her. Susan then tells Michael about David's wife and daughter's death. The doorbell rings. It's Susan's ex-husband, Jay. Sean and Beth run to the door to greet him. They're going to spend the weekend with their biological dad. Michael, however, doesn't want to meet him. At breakfast the next day, Susan's neighbor, Mrs. Cutter, rings the doorbell. She has seen a show called America's Most Wanted, and the sketch of a killer looked just like David. Susan assures her that it's not him. Michael hears this from upstairs and finds it weird. David dismisses it. That day, Michael and David meet for lunch at a diner where he asks him to be his best man. While talking about his family, David calls his dead daughter two different names. He recovers saying that her name was Lisa Michelle, but Michael still finds it suspicious. Later, Mrs. Cutter is at her house when she hears a doorbell. She goes to check but finds no one outside. She goes in again when David suddenly appears behind her. He pushes her down the basement stairs. He then suffocates her to death. Michael and Kelly are in the pool. He tells her about David's slip up earlier. Kelly thinks he is obsessing about it too much. At dinner, Jay brings Sean and Beth home. He is furious as Sean told him about David grabbing his neck the previous day. Michael restrains Jay and brings him outside. Jay and Michael talk for a while and bond. David apologizes to Sean, but Susan is still mad at him. He apologizes to her too. David has started working in real estate with Jackie. That day at work, she gives him a bunch of papers to fill in with his personal information. When he gets back home, he tells Susan that he doesn't like the real estate job and wants to quit. Susan goes out with Jackie and her friend at night. Sean and Michael are playing video games in his room. Someone rings the doorbell. David opens the door to see it as Jay. Jay has come to apologize to him and see his kids for the last time before flying for work. 
While talking, Jay reveals that he did a background check on David upon Michael's request. He calls out David for lying about the college he went to. Jay then accuses David of lying on several occasions. David takes the vase in the living room and hits him on the head. The boys do not hear the noise because of the video game. Meanwhile, at the bar, Jackie tells Susan she finds it concerning that Susan knows nothing about his background. Susan, however, takes offense to this and asks her to be happy for her. At the house, David drags Jay to the basement and ties his mouth and hands with duct tape. He puts a plastic bag over Jay's face and suffocates him to death. While he is at it, Michael sees the basement door open but doesn't go downstairs to check. David sends Michael a text from Jay's phone apologizing for not coming to visit and asks that the background check on David was successful and that he is clean. The next day, the police find Mrs. Cutter's body. Michael overhears a conversation between the mailman and David where the mailman tells him that she died in an accident. But when David tells the story to Susan, he adds that she died by falling down the stairs. This makes Michael extremely suspicious. Susan takes Sean and Beth to the dentist. David goes up to the attic to repair its floor. Michael and Kelly are by the pool. He tells her about David's weird behavior this morning, but she dismisses it again. Sometime later, David goes out to pick up Sean and Beth, but on his way, Susan calls him to tell him she will pick them up instead. Michael and Kelly go into David's closet to search for something against him. When they hear him come in, they hide there. Somehow they manage to get away before he sees them. That night, after dinner, David comes into Michael's room to tell him that he always wants him to be up front. David knows that they were snooping on his stuff. Later, Michael finds David's sketch as Grady Edwards while looking through the computer. He shows it to Kelly the next day, but she still doesn't believe it. David takes Michael through Jay's phone again when he finds Jackie's voicemail. She wants to talk to Jay about David. At the same time, Michael calls Jay. The phone starts ringing in the basement and Michael hears it. He sees David declining the phone through a window. He hurries downstairs to see David talking to someone on his phone in the living area. At breakfast, Michael takes a picture of David on his phone. Susan goes out to drop the kids at camp. Michael comes out of the shower to find David standing in front of him. He asks Michael about his plans for tonight. Michael replies that he is going to stay at Kelly's. Michael goes to his room to find it cleaned. He quickly looks through his phone to see that the picture of David is gone. Later that night, David goes to Jackie's and kills her by drowning her in the pool. Susan and David are the only two people at the house, but Michael plans to sneak into the basement to look for evidence against him. David, on the other hand, plans to murder Susan that night. He sets out his tools and gives Susan a pill to help her sleep better through the thunderstorm. Michael and Kelly are in the car outside. He tells her to call him if she sees someone wake up in the house. He then enters the basement through the skylight. He manages to break the cabinet's locks and finds a bag with his father's initials on it. David had hidden it the night he killed Jay. Michael notices a freezer in the room and opens it. Kelly sees David's room light up and calls Michael, but his phone drops and breaks, so now Kelly cannot help him. She runs to the skylight through which Michael went in to call him. Meanwhile, Michael moves around the ice cream in the freezer to reveal Jay's body in a plastic bag. He retreats and falls in shock. David finds Kelly and punches her to the ground. He blocks the skylight window and traps Michael in. David then drags Kelly to the kitchen and starts preparing knives and weapons for his kill. Susan wakes up and comes to the kitchen as well. David maniacally tells her that this is not going to work because of Michael since he is too disrespectful and says that he thought she could be Mrs. Grady Edwards. Susan is stunned when David grimaces and asks, who am I here? Susan calls him by his name, causing him to say, David, I'm David Harris. Just as she notices Kelly on the floor, David comes at her with a knife. She runs and hides in the bathroom. David breaks down the door. As he's about to stab her, she stabs his neck with a broken piece of mirror. Michael manages to break down the basement floor. Michael, Kelly, and Susan reunite, but David comes after them again. They hurry to the attic. Michael tries to close the doors on him, but David manages to get up there. The attic floors are weak, so when David and Michael are fighting, Michael falls through the floor. Kelly threatens David with an electric saw, but the floor breaks and both Kelly and Susan fall through it. Michael attacks David and both of them fall onto the roof. They struggle there for a while and fall to the ground. They both lie unconscious there. Finally, Michael wakes up from a coma in a hospital bed. He has been there for over a month. David, on the other hand, fled from the scene. No one has seen him ever since. The movie ends as we see David introduce himself as Chris Ames to a widowed woman with two kids in a grocery store. Thank you so much for watching the video. Make sure to like it and leave a comment down below. Subscribe to our channel for more videos.